Hey everyone, welcome back. This is going to be our last um, poetry analysis video for this poetry unit, though maybe we'll do more in the future. Um, today we are going to read another love poem. This one is by Elizabeth Barrett Browning and it is titled, How Do I Love Thee? It appeared in her book, Sonnets from the Portuguese. Uh, which is a book of love poems that she wrote, many of which are sonnets. So the one we're reading today is Sonnet 43. Um, it's a lovely poem. It's one of my favorite love poems. She was a poet in the 1800s, so it's going to feel more dated. It's very Victorian. Um, she wrote many poems throughout the course of her life during which she was very sick quite often and was very reclusive and stayed home, but ended up marrying um, another poet, Robert Browning. Um, and that uh, love between the two of them inspired her to write many of these love poems. So this one that I'm about to read to you is written for her husband, as are most of the poems in the book. And um, we'll go ahead and get started. You should have a copy of the poem and your analysis guide. So, here's your first reading of How Do I Love Thee? How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling is out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And, if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. All right, that is your first um, read of the poem. As you're looking through and starting to annotate and paying attention to the things that jump out at you, as things you like, things you don't like, um, please mark them. For me, on my, on my read of this, I really love the format of this poem and how she begins with the lines, how do I love thee, let me count the ways. I really love it because even though it might seem common to us, I feel like it's unique for the time. So I see in my mind young girls making lists of all the reasons that they have a crush on someone or all the reasons that they, that they love someone. And yet here's this woman from the 1800s doing the exact same thing in such a beautiful, such a poetic way. Um, so I love that that is how she has set up this poem. There's a few really strong descriptions in here that I love too. Um, the next one comes from the next three lines here. So I had basically put a, a plus sign next to the first line and then the following three. Um, I love this juxtaposition when she says, I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace. She's talking about the expansiveness of love and noticing that it has, um, it goes beyond physical parameters of depth, breadth, and height, which are very like physical and tangible, but also goes into some of those like more spiritual elements of your being too. You know, her soul, grace, and being, being some of those words to juxtapose against the more physical limitations. So I really like those lines as well. And then uh, another one that I really was impressed by was towards the end when she says, I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. So I love the line about childhood's faith. I think I can immediately go back to the place when I was a child and I had maybe blind faith and, and so much innocence and so much purity of heart and purity of soul. Um, and that, that, that pure essence of, of innocence and faith that she has rediscovered that in adulthood through her love, I think is really beautiful. So um, those are some of the things that I really enjoy about this poem. Um, 
so I think, you know, as we're reading, I may have covered it, but, you know, she's making a list of all the reasons and all of the ways in which she loves her husband. And, um, and she's describing those different ways because they're, they're, they're so big and they're so expansive and they're so important and they're so varied because love comes in all types of different forms and she's needing to make this list to be able to try and capture all of these ways that she loves her husband. So that's my initial understanding of the poem and my kind of overview of it for us. Um, on second read, we go back through and we look for some of the language that stands out to us, the verbs, the adjectives, and the imagery. So the verb that really stands out, of course, probably to all of us is the verb to love. Um, I love thee to the depth. I love thee to the level. I love thee freely, purely. So love is a reoccurring verb that keeps standing out. There are a few others such as um, strive, turn, and lose, but really it's the verb love that is repeated over and over and stands out. Um, a few of the adjectives that I have chosen are highlighted here. So depth, breadth, and height in that uh, second line was significant, but then also below in the middle, um, the adjectives freely and purely also stand out to me um, because those are the words that she's using to describe the love that she has. They're not necessarily the full-blown metaphors, but they're the adjectives that she's using. So love is free and love is pure. Um, those are really beautiful ways of describing love. Uh, let's see, in terms of imagery, I really liked the line in the middle that says, I love thee, I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet quiet need by sun and candlelight. So by sun and candlelight, I paused when I read that the first time and then when I went back and did my imagery, I was like, oh yeah, I'm choosing that one. Because I think what she's saying is that there are levels there are levels to to existence and that sometimes it's just day to day and I think that's what the candlelight represents is that small light um, and then there's kind of like these grand gestures and experiences of love and maybe that's the sun which is this really powerful light and so everything in between in those quiet moments and those really exciting moments she's feeling her love um, so that juxtaposition of a small light versus a large light stood out to me as good imagery um, and then again towards the end, she says, I love thee with the breath, smile, tears of all my life. So it's in every breath, it's in every moment, it's in every hardship, every sorrow or tear of joy, and in every smile. So in the expansiveness of her feelings and, and her experiences, she's feeling um, love for this person. So that would be another piece of imagery that stood out to me. Um, Taking all of that into consideration, when I think about the mood of this poem, I'm really thinking about how love is pervasive, how it exists everywhere, and that it's all-encompassing. Um, though different ways that she is counting and putting in her list all the ways that she loves her husband, it shows the breadth of love. It shows how dynamic it is and how it's everywhere. And so I feel really confident in love right now. I feel that the power of love can conquer all and that it's, it's something that, um, always exists and can't be taken away, that it's it's everlasting. So I'm, I'm confident by that and I'm feeling that love is pervasive. When I think about my image, I just can't help but imagine maybe a teenage girl or a young woman or maybe a young man too, but I imagine this teenage girl sitting in her room writing this list of all of the reasons that she has a crush on a boy or all the reasons that she loves someone and going through that list and maybe drawing hearts all over it. To me, there's a very... Um, a, very, a sweetness and an innocence to the format of this poem and the way that it's written that is that is really sweet and yet 
it's also so powerful. It doesn't diminish her love at all. It isn't immature and it isn't um, superficial or simple or simplistic. It's very deep and it's very meaningful and it speaks to the depth of emotions that a person can experience. Um, and yet I imagine this from somebody who's maybe giddy with love, the type of person that would be compelled to write a list of all the reasons that they um, love their partner or their lover or the person that they're writing about. So that's the image that comes to my mind. Um, so I think I want to read it to you one more time and then we'll talk a little bit about, about theme. Um, I think because she has all these different examples, it isn't maybe necessarily one thing other than that love is all encompassing and that it fits into so many areas of life. So we'll read it one more time and do a quick analysis. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling is out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. So... In addition to thinking about love as this everlasting and all-encompassing force of good and force of light, um, I also take from this that she's saying that love is sustaining. So, you know, when she has given up hope or when she... Um, loses faith in anything else, she can always fall back on this love, which also really makes sense when you take that in the context of her life and how much she suffered and how much pain she felt and that she was often alone and stayed inside. And then she meets this man and he imbues new life into her and she gets to experience this whole range of emotions that she otherwise may not have felt and how that must have been so powerful for her. And I can, I can read that in her words. Um, I think that she's talking about how love exists in every moment and in the normal quiet moments when you're just together as well as the big exciting ones. Um, I think about how she's saying that her love is unconditional. Um, she's talking about it being freeing and being pure that, you know, love sets you free. Um, that it can't be tainted. Uh, I think we talked about how love is pure and how love is innocent. Um, and then I think finally with her closing lines, it really, she makes the point that love grows stronger with time and that even after death, their love will survive and might get stronger even then, which considering the fact that both Elizabeth Barrett Browning and her husband are both now dead, and yet here we are reading her love poems and maybe feeling inspired or feeling some amount of empathy with her feelings and her experience really goes to show that their love is everlasting um, and that it does get better after death. And, you know, I'm sure you could see that as hoping that their souls are still together and that their love for each other still exists. But the fact that they get to share it with the world um, and that we all get to read it hundreds of years later is also really special and speaks to the power of love. So um, I think there's a lot of themes. Obviously, the theme is love, but how you want to take that and expand on that, um, I think she gives you a lot of options here in every single one of those ways that she's describing how she loves um, Robert Browning. So um, different type of poem from the last one for sure, but another beautiful take on the theme of love and love poetry. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all soon.